spotters how are you guys doing welcome back to the spot and today we're coming to you live and well not really live but from lagos anyway <laughs> um and we've been joined by our guest of the day she is a writer a poet and um the official organizer of the akin festival uh it's lola shoni which we're going to get invited to this year but that she likes it or no, no we yes you have to come the past two years flights I've accommodations because that's uh, i see we last year right? which flight <laughs> first of yeah, all we're so. gonna drive <laughs> well that's our that's my hometown so it's really? cool yeah, yeah. You can just i'm from about there as well you too yeah Fabulous. Yeah. The That's past great. two years. No, I'm not from Angola. Okay. No, he's not from Angola. <laughs> I'm just helping. <laughs> he's trying to help us somehow. Yeah. The past two but years, yeah. I haven't been able to hit Ake because we're always in Calabar during the oh, time. Yeah. Ah. During the time. Ake. When is he holding so this year? So much fun this year. 17th the, to the 21st of November. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. We've got Imani da Silva coming from Angola. Mm -hmm. She's a transgender. She's a TV presenter, actually. Okay. Beautiful. Oh. Um, yeah, she's going to be interviewed by by a doctor, not because there's anything wrong with her, but no. just because <laughs> it's, it makes for it's an a, interesting. Yes, but oh also, <laughs> well, we want to know what the journey. Is. Yeah, yeah, we want to listen yeah. to her journey yeah. and, and find out how you know what it was like at the beginning and what it's like now and what it was like when she kind of. Uh, do you think are people interested in that story here? Of course. Mm? Are people interested what? in that story here? I think we're so, fascinated. Yeah. They were by fascinated it. by Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, mm. but but for me, it's it's just a a human being you know and and uh, her story is very interesting it's yeah, different yeah. and i like that and i think other people will engage with that yeah. we also have and this is great um i don't know if you've heard of dr dennis mukwege mm -hmm. this is the doctor um from the drc oh, yeah. who has treated forty thousand women oh, yeah. yes. after they were gang raped yes. um, by I the militants and the rebel him. forces he, he make we times are list? screening. I think he made time 100 or something. Probably. One of those things, yeah, probably. twice nominated for the Nobel Peace, Peace oh, Prize. Wow. Won the Sarakov um, Prize, the oh, EU oh, Parliament. Okay. Um, and European Parliament, sorry. So he is, uh, we're going to get to chat to him, um, but we are screening the movie um, that's based on his story. His work, it's yeah. called the, the Man Who Mends Women. Ah, it's oh, wow. fascinating. Yeah. Trailers all over our website. Mm -hmm social media it's really brilliant and what is your website it's akefestival.org okay. so if you want to register if, if you want to come and actually see this uh, be there at the screening mm -hmm. you just have to apply okay. because for security reasons we have to be quite careful with it yeah. okay, so perfect. do that on our website yeah. you get your invitation immediately let's awesome. talk about writing now and your book the book We've 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 talked about this man. book. We found that book so oh, much. So on this show. much. I love you guys. No, like seriously. If it wasn't for these guys who were just talking about it, so we talked about it so many times on the show. Yeah. And then I remember the day that we went. I, I got it from. A Sorry, it's store. called. Uh, oh, the secret, <laughs> the secret lives of Baba Segi's wives. <laughs> the I secret went, lives of Baba Segi's wives. I got it, and <laughs> I was like, it was such a pleasant read. Yeah. Thank you. So Where did that story come from? It's a true story. Um, when I was in Imbado, my okay. brother had this girlfriend um, called Anne. I totally loved her. She was a medical student. And she used to come and say, Lola, let me tell you what happened in the hospital today. So that's how we did one operation. We caught the man. And I used to be like, wow. This is great. I was like 14. I loved her. So I, I think I loved her more than my brother. But anyway, she um, one day came and said, Something happened in the hospital, oh God. But wait, let me tell you what happened two weeks ago. And she started to tell me this story of how this man, this polygamist, he was a spare parts dealer, it was actually Igbo, oh, okay. um, had two wives, married a graduate, and then kind of brought the, the, the new in. wife to the hospital. And how they had to do all their tests, comprehensive, you know, look at him, look at her, and then how the news and how it came out just sort of devastated the family. Mm. So when I heard the story, you know, and I just finished reading um, Elan and the Jewel. Okay. Wale Shuenka, yeah. And I was thinking this Baroka is just evil, you know, <laughs> has everything, all the women he wants, you know, I was like, ah, is this what the future like holds? Is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> One day me to be plucking somebody's armpit uh, yeah, <laughs> So anyway, so I said, eh, okay, I like this story. I'm going to write it. So I, I hadn't planned to be a writer at the time or anything. So fast forward, maybe about 20 years, I, well, maybe, yeah, about 20, I couldn't sell my, my first novel, Harlot. Okay. okay. And then I started, so one day I got so depressed, I just called my agent and I said, do you know what, I, I don't even want to talk about this Harlot anymore. I want to write another story. And she goes, tell me the story. And I 
told it to her in about 10 sentences. And she said, that is the book, mm. write it. And mm. I started, it took me about 18 months, done and dusted, mm. you know, and that's, that's the story. So well. Great. I, always, I always wonder how you guys are able to do the writing. I mean, you just said 18 months, they're like, this is one night. It's, it's, a, long is, long it's time, a long time. But I know people have written for even longer sometimes yeah. because maybe mm. they take breaks and all of that. So how, how does yours work? Do you take time off? Do you go to the mountain? <laughs> I say 18 yeah. months. I actually got a postgraduate certificate while doing um, in it? education while during oh, wow. that period. Oh. That's why it took so long. Because I write quite fast. Um, one, one of the things that's, um, one of the reasons why my, my second novel hasn't come out is that I'm very, I have to really feel the characters. Mm. I have to know them very well. Mm. I have to be able to predict what they're going to say. I know when their voices sound right. And sometimes you've got four main characters and you've captured, you've got the voices of two of them and two are still like, mm, yeah. I don't know. And that is a problem for me. So once I have that, I can pretty much set up a routine. And mine was very simple because I also had a full-time job at the time. Wow. So 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. every day. I have so a write question. straight for six hours. <laughs> so there, there's this like little rumor which started as a result of a picture that went online of a, particular, uh, a popular director, Tunde uh, Kalani, and a picture of the book. And he tweeted something like, just something a bit mysterious. Mm -hmm. So we're wondering, mm -hmm. are we gonna get a movie? Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's gonna happen. We, we've already, um, we just sold the TV rights actually. Oh, wow. so they're gonna do a TV series in the UK. Oh, wow. Um, so a three part series. So that's Like a mini series. That. Yeah. yeah, and then we're gonna have the, the, the movie as well. We haven't signed anything. Okay. I love um, Tunde Kelani's work. Absolutely love his work. Um, but it, it's also a lot of this, there, there's a lot of interest mm -hmm. in the okay. film rights, to be okay. honest with you. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not easy for me to say just because I like this person, that's Let the person go we're going to yeah. go with. Got it. One of the things that's important to me, however, I would like the film to be in Yoruba with English subtitles. Yes. Because I was thinking in Yoruba the entire time that oh, I was okay. writing it. Okay. A lot of people talk about the language. Yeah. Um, and it's because they would speak Yoruba and the challenge for me Translate. Exactly. It was like, okay, let me now find a way to say yeah, this in English yeah. in a way that makes sense but retains the Yorubaness yeah. of the sentence. Yeah. And yeah. Yes, I'm calling for a role. Which role? What do you want to play? I want to play the graduate. Why would you want to play the graduate? She wants to play the graduate. The tush babe. <laughs> I think it's possible. <laughs> Everything is possible. Anything. But you could, you'd make a good segi. Ooh, because you, you think like so? you could yeah you you could like play you could she play anything from 15 to maybe 26 let's do this <laughs> go on audition go on stop, 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 let's do it <laughs> I can't talk I'll spoil your movie for you <laughs> yeah. it's just to be a drive it's just to drive it's just to drive okay, uh, let's say, let's say don't drive. say much <laughs> how does that song go yeah get, get up and drive shut up and drive shut up and drive that's yeah. interesting. That's that looking forward to that. I mean, Tude Kalani is a... Uh, Formidable. Yeah, he's, very, very, he's, very, very he's, he should yeah. be in good hands. Yeah. But I know we'll some, most times, I know with creativity, you guys don't have that much control of mm -hmm. yeah. what happens no, no. there. So, yeah. so, so good luck. Not interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. And looking forward to Ake this year as yes. well. It's going to be, so gonna be awesome. Thank All you. right, so it's time for us to take another break. When we come back, we'll be talking about our topic of the day. So please stay with us. Welcome back to the spot, guys. If you're just joining us, yes, we are in Lagos, not in our loft in Calabar as usual, but we're hanging out here. And yes, food has been served. Um, our guest is, I don't know, she's eating healthy, maybe, so she's not trying to do fries and things. I like the way you try to make it sound like you actually offered me. <laughs> hey! The shade! Zena, that is beside you. No, I mean, I'm sitting right here. My plate is in front of her. You are, you're nice. You just Who this is all because she wants something. She wants to be Segi. That's all no. it is. Let me tell you now. She's she's working it, working the angles. No, I'm no, actually going out for dishwa. lunch later. Okay. Uh, so I've been kind of you know how you save your stomach. Yes. Yes, because I want to have yeah. a big dessert after Ooh. as well. Okay. So uh, today, um, our topic of the day mm -hmm. is attitudes and their altitudes. So how basically how your behavior, your mannerisms affect you, ultimately. I guess. Okay. 
um, how far like an attitude can take you or, yeah. or limit you or limit so you or something yeah, yeah. so um, characteristics as well maybe yeah if you are yeah. a happy person yeah mm -hmm. then they maybe say. in at work you get promoted a lot because of that like she's she's nice to be around she works hard mm -hmm. and she comes with good energy so mm -hmm. yeah but so, you're not a very smiling person you're just yeah. the guy who's very so yeah i like him for that he does his work and he goes mm -hmm. so let's promote him because he doesn't that, get yeah. distracted so basically I, things like the things, things along those lines okay, oh. so so i have a question about that because okay. you know there's this um impression that writers have this attitude Right, so they're, they're usually very sullen, very moody, and they're just very into themselves. And that sometimes affects the work that they do. Have you found this to be the case? Or what, I mean, because you, you're not, you're not <laughs> like sullen good. and moody. You're like I super am. peppy and like, you know, so you're not the stereotypical. No, that's, what, that's what I am when I'm in the dark. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, referencing the, 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 proverb the proverb you talked about earlier. <laughs> um, I guess I'm one of those people, this is talking about me personally, I think I'm almost the same person that I am, you know, indoors. Okay. I, I try not to pick my nose, but I do get that uh, <laughs> impulse every once in a while in public. That's it. You know, I, I cut my nails really low, but I always keep my, uh, my index, <laughs> index. finger. I, the, the nail there is For the substantial. Digging. It's important. <laughs> because there's nothing. Look, I'm a, I'm a writer. I want to focus on my writing. Yeah, I mean, there's you. something somewhere <laughs> that, that when, when I'm exhaling. That stream of no, no, no. I don't. I, I, I don't. Have to be, I, it has to be found. Nah, you've got to find it. <laughs> no matter how long it takes. It's like it becomes a mission. <laughs> so, but, but most of the time, um, they, uh, writers spend a lot of time on their own. Mm. It's a very uh, kind of solitary endeavor. Yeah. And... Um, you, you sort of become less conscious of public perception. Okay. You, it, do, it just doesn't matter as much. Okay. What's most important is that is your output is, is what you're actually managing to produce and the quality of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when you've lived in that world for so long and you're having to now engage with people, um, it's kind of difficult to gauge. You kind yeah. of think, oh wow, but yeah, I just want to be myself, the, the person that I am in my room. I, yeah, I, w I can be bad tempered. <laughs> and to, you know what? It sells too. Mm. That's the problem. Mm. When, when you've got the public attention, it doesn't matter mm. if, they, if you're nice or, yeah. or if you're nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What matters is what, that you're selling a product. What's mm. the one character trait you have that you think has gotten you? to this point yeah the most if there is any maybe my openness um, I'm a pretty open person um, easy to get along with I think um, approachable hmm. um, most writers don't get that I don't it's a strange thing look when I was in secondary school I was a social prefect when I was at the Ogun State University, I won the most sociable Oswites five years in a row. <laughs> five years in a row. Yes. You were just, hey guys. I was just, you know, but the funny thing is that I had all these acquaintances. What it is, I think, is that people feel comfortable with me okay. very quickly. quickly. Um, but it doesn't necessarily translate to a long-term commitment or... or relationship on my part oh. and that's the thing because i tend to think that's how i am generally with everyone mm -hmm. okay. um, so maybe they might expect they feel more, special but they're like, really yeah, like not I just, <laughs> like we just yeah. said i mean what's that's it how are you feeling so familiar time, yeah no <laughs> no i don't think it's quite like that <laughs> yeah, I know. and i think there's something about the about my manner that also uh, it becomes quite apparent that Perhaps the relationship won't go any further. However, the quality of what we've shared is still it's memorable. Still good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good, good balance. Yeah, that is yeah. a good balance. Um, so, a uh, characteristic that has, I would say, it's probably my um, my work ethic. Okay. I think that would probably, yeah, because I, I'm a. When I think about my character, it's very, um, it's not as balanced as yours. It's, it depends on who I'm with and mm. how long I've known the person and how much time I spend with them. So I can be warmer on the one end with people I grew up with who know me and who 
know like what my character base is like and then people that I meet initially I can be a little Okay. With John. Garden. Ooh. Okay, yeah. That is the word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, it's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll find out uh, what characteristics have helped Lamide and Ibuka move on up in the world. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the spot, guys. We are still talking attitudes and their altitudes here on the spot with the lovely Lola Shanae and so before the break yeah. it wasn't my turn it we're going you? around this way so oh, okay, Ibuka, okay. Like, so go ahead like, and just do it. I mean you're just one person away anyways so. I want him like, to go it first. wasn't my turn Ibuka, it what characteristics um, have gotten you far in life <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. procrastination definitely not uh -huh. which I'm still praying about but um, I think it's Almost sort of like you, um, my ability to get along with people easily. It's not your um, looks. No. It's not what? It's not, not your, your looks. looks. Is it? No. No. He grew into this. <laughs> 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 no, because everyone talks about you. All the young ladies are like, Epuka is our crush. That's what they all say. It's crazy. He knows it. Yeah, you mean he this knows now. I don't know. They just kind of. <laughs> it comes to you. They, they yeah. Yeah. And then they start talking about Epuka. So I was like, what's the Epuka? So bring my phone, check him. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't know if it's even just... My first impression isn't always great, interestingly, mm. unlike you. I know a lot of people who have said, ah, that time, I didn't send you, man, or you were just annoying, or you, I thought you were arrogant, you know. Mm. When I get the opportunity to interact, sit and have a conversation yeah. or interact mm. and hang out, yeah, most times. I, don't, I think... It, I, I, I don't think I was always that way. Like you said, you were that, like that from school and everything. Mm. I used to be very shy, and not I never really wanted to converse or be around people. I think boarding school helped me a bit. Mm. Over time, university, yes, yeah, school definitely helped me. When all those presentations started happening, <laughs> if you like be shy, you have to come outside and talk to <laughs> yeah. you know things like that. So over time, then of course, getting into media now was the final opener. Frontier. So opener. I think it's that probably. Now okay. it's your turn. Yes, it is my <laughs> turn. And I was actually trying to buy time because honestly, during the break, I was joking that I was saying, oh, it's a praying mother. But I think it might be because <laughs> I really honestly cannot tell you what it is. I can't. I, th there's just not, I'm not the most accommodating or, or I, I, with people that I know, mm -hmm. I'm awesome. If I don't know you, doesn't mean I'm, I'm not, not that I'm mean or anything like that, but I can't really point to, honestly to one thing that I feel like, yes, this is the thing that has made people like me or whatever. I just... No, no, I like you. It's just about... I mean, it has helped me go far in life. I mean, I work hard in general. I'm willing to work. Um, you know, I'm willing to help people. I'm willing to learn new things. But I don't know if that's what it is. I don't know. A heavy dose of grace and luck and, and all those things put together, I would say. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. You, you, when you asked her the question about um, <laughs> writers, I was starting to think about stereotypical, you know, when you look at careers and mm. when mm. you stereotype people or a certain group of people yeah. with being a certain way. And Nigeria as a whole comes to mind. You know, whenever you travel out, it's going to say, ah, must be a Nigerian. That's why yeah. he's loud. Yes. <laughs> you know, things like that. But, but or, int yeah. Sorry, interestingly, I was just going to say yeah. that. When you think of somebody who's a medical doctor, and this is where okay. sometimes in Nigeria things can just not go quite, quite as you expect. Yeah. But when you think of medical doctors or the people who aspire to be doctors, you imagine that they're very caring, very patient, mm -hmm. and just eager just to help. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is with a lot of Nigerian doctors, it's the exact opposite yeah. that you yeah. find. And, and nurses. Is something happen you want to share? <laughs> the trauma story. Like, not recently. <laughs> like coming from a place of <laughs> no, my husband's a doctor. Okay. But I, I often not read. Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> but I often read on, on on social media about people who've just had these horrible experiences. experiences. Yeah. And and so I will tell him. I'll say, "You're a doctor. Is this right? Mm. You know, is this?" And he says he, it goes wrong in medical school in yeah. Nigeria. It's something about the attitude, something about, you know, some sort of uniform. That, you know, lab coat yeah. can, can just <laughs> give them this yeah. air of, 
mm, I'm I know everything and, and yeah. I will choose when to release and yeah. reveal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's true. It's I think really yeah. I think a lot of times Nigeria does turn stereotypes sort of upside on, down on on, on, on its head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when you said doctors, I was also thinking about nurses. You know, yeah. I've had uh, pregnant family members tell me horror stories. I've had one or two myself. So yeah, with the medical profession, it's it seems that it's rare to find a very loving, nice person person with a nice bedside manner. A lot of times they just like eh eh eh. But are you the only one? I'm like. But I'm in pain. I'm like, the one that I'm not the one in pain right when I was in labor. Yeah, they, in Nigeria when I had my first son 19 years ago at a major uh, hospital in Ibadan. The nurse was horrible. My mom was with me and she was worried and she was like, you know, what can you give her for the pain? And she'll say, what is she the first person to have a child here? See? And the kindest person to me was the auxiliary nurse who was there to just sort of mop up yeah. the, and, and mm -hmm. she was lovely. And I could see the expression on her face when she'd look at me. And that in itself gave me strength. Aww. So it's interesting. Like, I don't think it's even just medical school, like you said. I think for a lot of, I mean, I'm not holding forth for anybody, mm -hmm. but I know that working conditions yeah. Can also in Nigeria generally system. for a lot of people is, then you go to these hospitals where because they have to interact with people directly and there are people who are emotional at that point because they're either in pain or someone they know is in pain or something needs to be sorted so emotions are usually involved with the kind of work they do yeah. but then you go to these hospitals these are people who have probably worked there 10 15 years they get paid six Pittance. months out of the year yeah the rest of the time they have to <coughs> rely on their private practice somewhere so most times when you come maybe they're in that point where you're like you know what i'm really sick of being here yeah. what is even the point point? and truth be told they've seen Everything. Eight thousand other women come in <laughs> trying to give birth. It's true. Yeah. So for them, it's it's sad that they're in that we've been left in this space where I mean, if it's a banker, you can you can walk away from the bank. Yeah. But hospitals are different. That's what why it's do? that's why it's harder to take. But uh, but I I don't I don't totally accept that because I yeah. think if you no, accept that, it doesn't mean I accept it. If you yeah, yeah. but but that sort of viewpoint that if yeah. you've seen something eight thousand times, then you should have mastered the art of pretending. To, to care, care. Mm, yes. rather than not caring in That's response cool. to I, the fact that you're sick of seeing people in pain. Yeah. <laughs> Do you That's see what I mean? That's an awesome way to we, put it. Lord, we really know how you feel. We need it. We need it on a banner. Pre yeah. Just know how pretend, to pretend, pretend to care. To care. <laughs> yeah. Know how to pretend to care. Honestly, but, but, but the truth is that it's a lot of medical personnel in the developed world. That's what they do. They pretend. Yeah. They, they, you just it's, it's, a, it's about a nod and a smile. Because at this moment, they walk out of the room and they're like, "Oh, hey." Because they have to do it. <laughs> All right, well, let's go on another break, guys. When we come back, we'll still be discussing our topic of the day. And we have much more for you here on the spot, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching the spot, and we're talking attitudes. And their altitudes. And you're going to complete it for me. <laughs> and um, I want to go negative now those supposedly negative characteristics, mannerisms that are now meant to maybe stunt your growth or your success and stuff like that. And then maybe talk about when it actually helps. <laughs> pride. <laughs> Things like yeah. pride and arrogance. Mm -hmm. There are people who leave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who do and so are well. doing great. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a wonderful... maybe they're making up for it with other things. Like what? So, mm, I don't know. Maybe they like just they're constantly giving. They're people who just give and um, emotionally and financially. To but a few to, people, to or a few people around or, them, or um, you know the people that matter, the people that are important. Okay. Um, maybe that's how they get away with it. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th I mean, here it, I, I know at least here in Nigeria, people always go on and on about being humble, and I feel like humility is actually overrated, in a sense. Because the way people see humility is that they want to step all, they want to step all over you, and they want you to be okay to with it. So that's yeah. their version of humility, and that version <coughs> I feel is overrated, which is what people feel like you have. So if you're not that way, then you're then automatically you're arrogant. arrogant you're, you're, you know, you're full of yourself. You're conceited, the, the and thing, sometimes you need to be that way. The other thing I was going to say is that a lot of those kind of characteristics are just simply used to mask things like insecurity. So I. I was, I went on Twitter about, you know, being socially awkward. And I said that I am an extreme, like, I'm very awkward socially. So I can see you and we've hung out maybe a few times and other times I'm just like in my corner. And it's not because 
I'm a horrible person or whatever. It's just I go through phases where I want to, to you know, converse and be in an environment and other phases when I don't. And then somebody responded and said, oh, but you're in the media, you're in TV, you're supposed to talk, you're supposed to be friendly, you're supposed to be everything. I said, yes, but I'm also Zainab. <laughs> you know, the Zainab yeah. outside of TV, mm, the yeah. normal person. So yeah. I just thought, like, mm. let's raise that issue of yeah. those behavior is being used to cover up mm -hmm. something um, else maybe. Uh, when you're talking about you know being that way with pride proud arrogance and maybe compensating for it somehow i don't know why donald trump came to mind no there's no and compensation <laughs> for him <laughs> are you sure it wasn't the humility that she talked about <laughs> that brought donald trump to mind because <laughs> i know he's he's special he's an a-hole yeah. Oh, totally. And a very interesting one. Yes. He, I find him absolutely entertaining. entertaining Fascinating, yes. You know? Yes. But he's done well. If you, I mean, he's not necessarily, he wasn't a poor child anyways. He had things yeah. handed down to him, which he has built on. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to him. And of course, he's been bankrupt a few times, but, mm -hmm. but he's very successful mm. business-wise. And everybody who's had encounters with him always has that whole, no, nah, this guy is not. Mm -hmm. So what is he doing right? You know, when you see people like that, what are they... Well, I think it's, I think with it's that, his mm -hmm. affluence, his position that then attracts people. Whether so, that just so blindsides people. Of, so yeah. it's everything not, else. So you is, can't even yeah. see that he's an annoying, difficult person. You're just seeing that. He, and I think you're, you're seeing it, or maybe ignoring it. I don't know. Describe. But the thing is also, if you're trying to do business with a successful businessman, he doesn't have like he could be have all be of nice. that. He doesn't have to be nice. Yeah. He's so long just, as, as long as the business part is working. It's not about working, personality. Yeah. Yeah. It's not at all about personality. And that's just, you know, kind of... But I mean, he gets know. married. Do women who fall in love with him? It's not love. Oh. Okay. It's not... I'm, the, maybe maybe Ivana, Ivana, the first wife. She was there for Was she the first time. wife or the second? Was Ivana know. the first? I'm not sure. I'm not remember. sure that Ivana was... The, I don't know if Ivana was the first. But, but Ivana might have... Because he was younger then. His hair was still... You know, something was kicking in that area. But the third wife... Girl, I know you don't know that man. Um, but I find now. his complexion very interesting. <laughs> his complexion? Yeah, uh, it's, he's, it's, it's like peach. <laughs> Peachy, yellowish yeah. kind of thing. Reminds me of one Asho, okay, that my Asho <laughs> used. Wow, whoa. That my, my cousin wow. used about two years ago. So that's what color Asho be? Color rich. Rich. You, know what? you, you know what we need to do is not get in trouble. Okay, okay. And let's okay. let's go ahead and throw okay, over to Adura. Adura is going to talk about fitness oh, okay. so that we can gist about Donald while she's doing that. We'll see you guys so. in just a moment. Hello, and welcome to Monday Fitness with Adura. I'm coming to you from the Clover House in Lekki Phase 1 in Lagos. Today we have a strength and stretch theme. I'm going to show you a strengthening exercise and then I'll show you a stretch that you can do after your workout. We're going to focus on the core today. We're going to do something called an up and down plank. Now with this, if you can't do the full version, I'll show you a modification where you get down on your knees. Wrists in line with your shoulders and hands shoulder width apart and you fully extend your legs okay this is a high plank brace your abs make sure your hips don't drop okay from here with control you're gonna go down onto your elbows and come back up onto your hands you switch sides now down left and up left okay modification down on your knees make sure you have your hands in the same position you go down up. okay what you want to do is a total of 10 which is five on each side a good stretch for the core, you have two. The first one will do standing, the next one will go back on the mat. Stand with your feet together, reach up, push your hips forward. So notice what I've done, I've gone from here with my bum slightly back to pushing forward. You reach right up and just lean back a little, not too far. Okay, you should feel a nice stretch along the front of your body. Hold that for as long as you can, if possible, 20 to 30 seconds. The second is a yoga pose I love. Really good for stretching out the front of your body. You start 
with your hands on either side of your chest, lying straight, and from here, you push the floor with your hands, lift up, elbows to your side, and just reach as high as you can. Extend your arms as much as you can, and just hold here. If you're comfortable, you can see about lifting your hips off the mat, but you don't have to, okay? So here is fine. And for some people, you find that they can only stay on their elbows to start. So you lift up here. As you get more comfortable, start to bring your hands back and lift up a little more. Okay. With this stretch, with the upward dog, don't hold for 30 seconds. Just hold for five deep breaths in and out. You take a break, repeat two to three times. Until next time, for more fitness tips and workouts, you can find me on www.adura-o.com or on Instagram at adura underscore o. Bye. Stay healthy. All right. Well, that was Monday Fitness. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go on another break. When we come back, we're rounding up the show. Please stay with us. Hi guys, welcome back to The Spot and today we've been talking about uh, attitudes and their altitudes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, is it a tongue twister, Zainab? It, it is a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Say it five times, go on. Attitudes and their altitudes. Attitudes and their altitudes. <laughs> um, yes. So before we go into our do's and don'ts, um, I want to find out. So you said you're, are you currently working on your next book or are I you am, waiting yeah. for Okay. Yeah, found you know two of my two of the voices are where I want them to be. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm pretty confident. So I'm writing here and there. Not much time, but doing my best. Has it ever happened that? Sorry, has it ever happened that you're writing your story? Maybe nothing. Maybe not even published. Short story, maybe, or something you just playfully were doing. Where you start off a, a book or a writing or a <coughs> story, knowing what you are going to write about, and then it becomes a different thing. Always. It what, always what, makes, what makes that happen? Stories write I mean, themselves. I've never really been a writer, but a few times I've tried to do stuff. I notice that sometimes they're like, yeah. okay, that wasn't what I set out to mm -hmm. do. What normally happens, and this is just my, my opinion, um, is that when you know those characters quite well and you make them quite real, when you start writing about them, they, act, they start telling you what, it is. what they're going to do next. It just yeah, suddenly good. starts to make sense because, because they're so madness. alive. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, yes. Ah, those people. Is <laughs> 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 those people? <laughs> they tell sure all you all. <laughs> they tell you what to do. You That's don't the tell thing. them. And okay. you're like, no, no, but I want, no, no. And, and it keeps pulling you, but you know it. You uh -uh. Just... I'm not crossing the streets. Uh -uh. Crossing the road, yeah. Wow. Mm, makes so sense, actually. Okay, okay nice. so you were talking about your first book that you were having issues publishing Harlot. Have you well, okay what's happening? Are you trying to re are you trying to rework it? You've just abandoned it? Everybody tells me to and for the Africa 39 thing an excerpt was published um, okay. from that manuscript and a lot of people were saying oh can't wait for Harlot. Um, I think I've kind of moved on from that story. I think it's something I'll revisit maybe with my fourth or fifth book okay. because it's easy for me to write. I've got it there. I've got the yeah. entire book. You know, it's just going back and reworking little bits and bobs because, of course, you continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So the idea is the new experience. You now go and use that to and edit. Add, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. to improve whatever, whatever you have, mm -hmm. you know, on the ground. So um, I might do. I don't know. But it was heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Aww. Okay. Well, I mean, so we, we also talked about the festival that's coming up in yes. October. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Now, there's writers and people coming from all over Africa, all over the world. All actually, over the world, fact. yes. And uh, yeah, just tell us, like, what, what, what should people, people expect? Yeah, what should people expect? You know, how, how, how can they sort of tap into the Ake spirit? Ake spirit. What does Ake I love mean? that. Ake? Uh, it's the name of a place. Okay, so it's just a place. Yes. Like okay. you have Alaki of a Bala. Uh -huh. yeah, so we Alaki and it's only Ake. Yeah, okay. The owner of Ake. Okay. Yeah. When people come to Ake Festival, they focus on the festival. They focus on what they've come to do. The guests love it because it's kind of 
break away the yeah, yeah, but it's rustic. It's rustic. rustic. Yeah. Exactly. Cultural. Um, yes. <laughs> and and Abeokuta, as you know, is full of history. Yes, it, it is. It has a very interesting history in itself. Yeah. And the people are really quite lovely. They are. Yes. So, I'm from Abeokuta, so obviously. Yeah. All right, it's time for us. My grandmother's from Abeokuta. Thank you for joining Great. us. That was shade. Nobody shades Okija. Don't Why shade Abeokuta. The whole world shades Okija. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that where the shrines are? See? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a shade, that was a question. Thank you guys for question. watching. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nala <laughs> Jonai, for coming on the show. My pleasure. It's been, been great. nice having you. You Lovely. are amazing. You guys, are, you guys rock. Thank you. Rock, you. you rock, rock yes. super. Thank you. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Peace out, guys. Oh, I, I, my Yay. Yes, I, I know. Next time, next time, we'll do it. Oh, oh, this is in our garden. <laughs> Ready? One, two, in now. then up. You don't? One more funny face. What a <laughs> <I> do? <laughs>